There's only a few managers I actually like. One of them is the Seagull manager. Fly in, dump on everyone, make a big mess, and then leave. I'm still trying to perfect my Seagull management moves, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about another manager I like, which is the context manager in Python. I'll show you how to use it and cover several ways to create your own. And then I'll talk about when you should use context managers and when you shouldn't. Before we start, I have something for you. It's a free guide to help you make better design decisions. You can get it at arioncodes.com slash design guide. It's a PDF file, pretty short, to the point, explaining the steps that I take whenever I design a new piece of software. And hopefully it's also helpful to you. So arioncodes.com slash design guide and the link is also in the description of this video. Now, let's dive in. The example that I'm going to start with today is pretty simple. It's just a basic main function that makes a connection with the SQLite database that's stored in a the file. Then we retrieve a cursor from that database connection. We execute a query, which is selecting everything from a table containing blocks. And then we're going to print out the result of that query. And then finally, we're closing the connection. So let me run this to show you the result of this. So we're getting back an array containing two blocks with a title, some content, and so on. As you can see, I'm using a try finally block here. And that's because I want to make sure that the connection is always closed. Let's say I print something here like logging.info closing connection, like so. Then I run this again. Now, obviously, there is no error here, so the connection is properly closed. But if I do something else here, like change the name of the table so the table block doesn't exist and then run this again, then we're going to get an error and we get the trace back here. But you see, we're also still closing the connection. That's because we have this finally clause here. The problem is that here, obviously, we have a very simple query, but it's going to be kind of annoying if we have to write everything we do with the SQLite database between these try, accept, finally blocks. And context managers are actually really helpful in that regard. What are context managers? Context managers allow you to control setup and teardown of any sort of resource in a way that minimizes the chance of you forgetting to do the teardown, especially in the presence of exceptions. If you've ever opened a file in Python, you've probably used the with statement to manage the file. This is a context manager, and it's a good example of managing resources because the with statement automatically closes the file for you when you don't need it anymore. So let's look a bit closer at what's actually happening in a with statement. This is the syntax of the with statement, with expression as variable do something. Behind the scenes, actually a lot is happening. There's an enter part and an exit part. And whenever there's an exception or the block of code has completed, the exit part is properly called. So you don't have to worry about that. In the example we saw in the beginning, there was a SQLite connection. That connection can actually itself be used as a context manager, like so. The advantage here is that the connection will automatically commit or roll back transactions. However, the object does not automatically close the connection, so you still need to close that manually afterwards. And then you'd have to make sure that that happens in all cases, especially if an exception is raised. The nice thing about Python is that we can create our own context managers. So let's create one for the SQLite example that automatically closes the connection for us. What I'm going to show you is two ways of creating a context manager, the hard way and the easy way. Now, the hard way is that you create a context manager class that handles closing the connection for you. And this is how you do that. So let's define a class here called SQLite that's going to form the context manager for our SQLite connection. And this class is going to have an initializer. And that initializer will get a file name, which is a string. And we're going to store that as an instance variable. And then we're also going to create a connection here, self.connection equals SQLite three dot connect with file name. There we go. So that creates our SQLite connection. Now this doesn't really establish the connection that actually happens when you request a cursor. So in the second part of this context manager, we're going to write the enter method. And in the enter method, we're defining what should happen when we enter this particular context. And in this case, that's going to be returning a cursor to our connection. So we're going to return self.connection.cursor. Let's add a log here. 
like so, so that we can see that answer is actually being called. And we can also define what should happen when we release this resource. And that's basically these things. So we added a logging.info to call exit, so we can see that this is actually happening. We're committing any changes, and then we close the connection. So that's the exit method. And now we have this. It becomes basically really easy to use, so we won't need this try accept finally blocks here anymore in the main function, but we can simply use the with statement now. So now I just write with SQLite, and then we're going to pass the file name. Let's also use a keyword argument here as cursor. So that's going to give us our cursor, the try block that's no longer needed. This is no longer needed. Then we can call cursor.execute, select all from blocks, and the whole finally part we can now delete because that's handled by the context manager. And now let's run this again. And now you see we have calling enter, then it retrieves the blocks, and then it calls exit. And let's say I make the same mistake again, and I write the wrong table name here. So let's run this again. And then you see we get, of course, a SQLite error that there is no such table. But if you go up, you see that we're still calling exit and cleaning up the resource, which is exactly what we want. So because we have now the context manager, it's way easier to use SQLite stuff anywhere in our code because we just use the with statement and we're sure that the connection is actually nicely closed when we're done. Now we can also set this up slightly differently. So instead of creating this class here with the uh, Donder methods, there's also a way to do the same thing, but with decorator. So let me delete this class for now. And what I'm going to do is use context lib. And we're going to use the context manager decorator to do something very similar. So I'm going to write here context manager, which is the decorator that we use. And then I have a function, let's call that open database that gets a file name, just like our class context manager that we had before. And now I can write this. You see my GitHub Copilot actually already creates this code for me. So we have here a connection. So we're connecting with the database. Then we get the cursor, which should actually be inside the try block because otherwise why have a try block, right? So we try to get the cursor and then we're going to yield that cursor. And because we're using the yield operation here, OpenDB actually acts like a generator. So we can open a database and then use the cursor. And then whenever we get a kind of exception, we're going back into this function here, and then it's still going to catch the exception here and clean up the mess that we made. And then we have the same thing as before. So in the finally part, we're closing the connection and we can even add here, just like we did before, a commit function call so that any changes are actually also being committed. And currently this is locking the error, but you could actually also remove this and just set it up like this very minimal setup actually. So this is our new way or maybe even a shorter way of setting up a context manager. And in the main part, well, we're basically using it in almost the same way, but now of course we're not using the class, but we're using the open db function call and that's going to yield a cursor so that works in exactly the same way as we had before so let's save this and let's now run this code and see what happens so here you see we have the error but it's still going to close the connection maybe i should add a log here closing connection like so let's run this again so now if i move up you see that we're still closing the connection here because that's what the context manager is doing for us. And the syntax here is more or less the same. We still have the with statement, so it's still really practical. Let's change this back to blocks, so we still know that it works. And now you see that we get the blocks that we want to have, and then we're also closing the connection as we expected to. So that's the decorator version of a context manager. And this also works. This is a pretty short way to do it. I really like this syntax. It's really easy to understand what's happening here, as opposed to the class version, which is a bit more complicated with the Donder enter and exit methods. Context managers also support async and await syntax. By the way, if you want to learn more about async concurrent operations in Python, check out this video that I did recently about that topic. And here's a simple example of an asynchronous context manager taken from the Python documentation. 
specifically for SQLite, there's actually a package called EOSQLite, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, that handles both asynchronous operations as well as automatic closing of the connection. So let me just quickly show you how that works. And that basically means that in this particular situation, you don't need to write your own context manager. So that's IO SQL Lite. And then instead of this with statement, what you can also do is you write here, you see main is now async, right? So I can uh, call an await here and then I'm calling it with connects and that should be application.db like so. So that's my database. And what I can do then is right here, cursor equals database.execute select everything from blocks. And then we're logging whatever the cursor gets. AL SQLite actually also allows to use a with statement. And then basically this, the database is actually a context manager. And then you can use the database within the with statement. So before we can run this, actually fetch all is also an asynchronous method. So we also need to write a wait in front of this. And same thing for the execute method. That's something you always have to get used to when you write asynchronous code that you need to not forget to write await in front of things. So connecting with database, executing query, and then fetching the results. Let's run this. And now you see we get again our two blocks. One final thing that I want to show you is that the database connection here is actually also a context manager. So you could also do something like this. So we write async with, and then, sorry, I need to type correctly async with aosqlite.connect as database. And then we have these two lines that go within the with statement. So within the with statement, we have now the database, which is the context manager. And then we run again, these two lines of code. And then when you run this program, you're going to get exactly the same result. And even the cursor itself is also again, a context manager. So you could even write something like this. So within the with statement, we could write async with, and then basically anything that's written here as cursor like so. And then this line we need to indent of course. And then basically this is what you get. And then you still get the same result. Now, I think these nested with statements are not great, so I would kind of avoid that. And you can probably also add it here in, on a single line. So I could also do it like this. So db.execute select star from blogs as cursor, like so. And then we don't need this. And this we can deindent. So then this is what we get. And then when I run this, then this is still going to work again. So lots of varieties and ways in which you can do this. So this does mean actually that the asynchronous with, it runs the various asynchronous tasks that you specify here in sequence. So it's not doing that in parallel. Otherwise we couldn't call db.execute on the db variable, but in this way you can still do it and not have all the multiple layers of indentation. And Python even allows you to write these things between parenthesis for clarity. So I could write here a parenthesis and then I could write another one here and then it can be on multiple lines like so. This by the way only possible in Python 3.10 but then again we get exactly the same result but it's a bit easier to see what's happening. So that's asynchronous context managers. Pretty complicated topic but still it's nice that it's possible to do these things in Python. So when should you and when shouldn't you use a context manager? Well, the main reason to use a context manager is to help allocate and most importantly, clean up resources. This is helpful if you want to open a file, a database connection, a network connection. If an error occurs, the context manager mechanism will automatically clean up the resource for you. And this also means that if you don't need to clean up resources, there's actually no reason to use a context manager. Because context managers use the with statement in Python, this results in that case in an unnecessary code indentation level and a new scope as well, because the variable is not accessible outside of the with statement. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you want to learn more about software design and development. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon.